the heart of Canada's prairies, Alberta bears a certain resemblance to Texas. This is where you can find the type of farming being targeted by French producers opposing CETA, the free trade agreement between Canada and the European Union. We are just touring past some of the uh, latest arrivals. These are 650 pound heifer calves that came in um, at the beginning of the week. The Gregory family raises 20,000 heads of cattle here. A big part of the animals are treated with growth hormones that are banned in the EU. These are all implanted cattle. The implant in the ear uh, is basically just to help them grow faster. Not too far from that herd, nearly 5,000 heads of cattle are being raised in separate pens. Because its meat is destined to the European market, the breeder must follow a stricter set of rules and standards that are more expensive, but implement in order to gain more customers. The restrictions for um, export to the EU are basically no growth enhancing products. Economically, um, it's way more efficient to to implant the animals. There's a lot bigger farms than, than us here in Canada. So for us to compete with them, we need to pick out some niche markets. It's a very new program in Canada, so it's gonna take some time to, to really get some traction. Only a handful of producers like Gregory are implementing the stricter European norms in order to benefit from CETA, which means tariff-free access to a market with 500 million potential consumers. But two years after implementing the accord, Canada has only reached 3% of the threshold of meat exports allowed into the EU, its second most important customer. Experts blame several roadblocks imposed by the European side. Actually, we're, we're importing more beef from the EU than we're exporting to the EU. So some of the Canadian producers have expressed concerns about that. We have uh, tariff-free access for a large quantity of beef, but some of the non-tariff trade barriers specifically related to some of the treatments that are used in our processing plants for uh, washing carcasses and, and maintaining food safety standards in the plants have not been approved by the EU. The agri-food sector is in a similar situation. Other industry sectors have also seen a decrease in their exports to the European Union. In Canada's capital, Ottawa, the Canadian Agri-Food Trade Alliance doesn't hide its frustration towards the European partnership. The negotiated terms are not being respected. There are always delays. There are always exorbitant costs. Some demands from the European Union are not adapted to the Canadian market and production. European exports to Canada have increased by 10 percent, whereas Canadian exports towards the European Union have dropped by 10 percent. Our agri-food sector is currently seeing a $3.5 billion trade deficit. As the world's fifth exporter of agri-foods, Canada claims its production models are reliable. But the win-win deal that was promised with the agreement is taking too long to materialize for Canadian producers, and some are getting impatient. Free trade agreements establish important standards. Procedures need to be quick, transparent and efficient. But does it mean that because Europeans reject certain products that they're challenging these standards? It's tricky. If Canada believes Europe is not respecting the agreement, in agri-foods for example, it can use the dispute resolution mechanism that's provided for in the agreement. Since it was implemented, 13 out of 28 members of the European Union have ratified the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement. Disappointed Canadian exporters are hoping business can take off in the next few months by implementing a different kind of dialogue.